All right, I think I'm live. Hi, everybody. Dialect Coach Chris Lang here on TMFA. It's Technique Tuesday. Hope everybody's having a great Tuesday. And um, uh, if you are watching here on TMFA, and um, I'm going to see who you are, uh, go ahead and say hello. Say hi to me. Um, I want to know uh, who's here, who's watching. I can see there are people watching. So please do say hello if you are here watching. And um, in addition to that, um, if you have any questions today about accents, accent-related things, anything at all, accent-wise, accent-acting, uh, please do shout out here in the comments. I want to make sure that you uh, have an opportunity to get your questions answered. After all, this is, um, you know, Technique Tuesday, and I'm here to be able to provide you with the uh, uh, best kind of accent support possible so you can be successful in your accent acting careers. And if I don't know what your questions are, uh, I can't help you. So please do uh, shout out and, and let me know. Um, today, um, in addition to answering your questions and um, you know talking through whatever it is that's going on for you guys accent wise, and I assume there's gonna be stuff going on because uh, in the last 10 days, almost two weeks, um, I found myself prepping a lot of actors for auditions. So stuff is now back to auditioning. Um, it's not as busy as we'd expect normally during pilot season, but it's a heck of a lot busier uh, than it has been for the last, I don't know, year or so uh, due to COVID. So stuff is back in action, and every single actor is being asked for accents right now. So um, I assume that there's stuff going on. You may have questions. Please do let me know what those questions are. Put them in the comments. But first and foremost, say hello in the comments. I want to know who the heck is here. Um, what do you, uh, who are you that is watching me here? Uh, I want to know that um, and to say hello and to say hi because these want to be conversations. I don't want to just sit up and dispense, you know, knowledge from up on high. I want to meet you where you're at today and see how this technique interfaces with your actor's toolbox on today of all days. Um, so what am I going to be talking about today? Today's a little bit, um, a little bit different than what I've done uh, more recently. I've covered more sort of general things uh, more recently, uh, topics on accents, accent acting, and acting technique together. Um, we've gone through vocal anatomy in the last few months. Um, I'm going to get really specific, just on the off chance that some of you want some more specific knowledge today. Um, and we're going to be talking about some vowels in particular. So um, I'm going to go ahead and dive in. Uh, this will probably be a little bit shorter uh, Technique Tuesday for me, just because I'm going to have to go and coach here real soon and, and meet a couple actors online. Um, so this is what we're looking at in terms of vowels. Just as a... Oh, let me grab, my, grab my stuff over here, guys. Uh, <laughs> when you have a desk full of papers, and then the thing that you need is like underneath everything else. All right, vowels. You guys have seen my handy-dandy vowel chart. Just as a reminder, this is a picture, a rough map, a schematic, if you will, of the space that you possess inside your mouth. That's what this represents. And so based on this mouth shape here, we can detect lots of different things. Uh, one of the things we can detect, for instance, is whether we're dealing with the front, the middle, or the back of the dorsum of your tongue. All right, what part of the tongue is being used to shape this vowel. The other things that we can look at here are going to be this close, close mid, open mid, and open journey. All right, um, think of it this way. How close is the surface of the tongue to the roof of your mouth? That's what we want to think about, that closeness. Another way I describe this sometimes is the relative closeness or openness of the articulators either to each other or from each other. That's another way to think about it. But uh, it's also very useful to think about the surface of the tongue being either close to or far away from the um, roof of the mouth. That's the close to open. Okay? And then you'll notice we have the holy line of demarcation right here, this midline. And we can tell about arching and cupping. So everything that happens above that holy line of demarcation, we're dealing with tongue arching. The surface of the tongue is going to be arching, whether it's the front, middle, or back of that dorsum. And everything below this line here, we're dealing with tongue cupping. The surface of the tongue will be cupping, whether, again, it's the front, middle, or back of the dorsum. All right? So this is how we physically are able to put together vowel sounds for ourselves. There are physical things that we can do in regards to shaping our vocal tract to create vowel sounds. 
all right? Um, one thing that this thing does not display, all right? There's no information on here about what the lips are up to, all right? The lips are kind of separate from this in a way, because this is talking about the tongue, tongue arching and cupping, and we're talking about what part of the tongue, and we're talking about how close or far away it is from the roof of the mouth, right? Um, lips are going to be separate from the tongue, but just know this. Everything we do here, everything here, all right, is going to have a version of the lips where the lips are unrounded and where the lips are rounded. So you have two different versions. What do we mean by rounded, unrounded? All right, unrounded. Actively, these muscles right here, this orbicularis oris muscle, all right, your rosorius and your buccinators, pretty well not forcing any round shape into the lips. And sometimes you may even see this as a release. You may even see a little bit of spreading here, where the rosorius muscle engages and spreads the lips. We may see that. All right, that's what we mean by unrounded. Rounded, what we mean is that we're going to send the lip corners together and a little forward, and something like this. All right, so try that for yourself. All right, so that's the rounded, unrounded discussion. And like I said, everywhere here, everywhere, everywhere here, we're dealing with um, a, a thing that the tongue is doing and a thing and like how close or open that shape is. And for every place that we try to find within the space in your mouth, there's a version where the lips can be rounded and unrounded. So that's what we're dealing with in terms of this vowel space. That's just a little bit of review for everybody. Um, and it's worth being reminded of this, my friends, uh, if for no other reason than that this is foundational access technique to understand how vowels are being created, what's happening with vowels, what's happening with consonants, how everything's being put together right, particular vowels, if we talk about a physical way for us to experience vowels, vowels doesn't stop being this kind of nebulous, weird thing that we kind of have to remember what they sounded like. Um, the reason I'm teaching this today is because I have probably half a dozen clients who are dealing with something right now, and they all have the same version of this story that I'm going to tell you. They have been in some sort of speech or voice class with, you know, whatever conservatory they've been studying. And their voice teacher and their speech teacher comes up to them and says, all right, we're going to work on this vowel now. And they say, they all agree, okay, that whatever the vowel is. And the speech teacher says, now I'm going to say it, and I want you to repeat it after me. All right. And so the speech teacher comes up, and I'm just going to choose one of the vowels that, we, that I'm going to talk about today. All right. Probably be, be very familiar to many of you or a version of it. All right. And so this speech teacher says, all right, repeat after me. This is the vowel. Say, ah. And the student goes, ah. And the speech teacher, the speech teacher then says, no, 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 no. Say, ah. And the student goes, ah. And the speech teacher says, no, 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 you're still off. Say, ah. And the student again goes, ah. And the speech teacher says, no, 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 you're still, you're still off. You're not there. It's ah. And the student goes, ah, uh, yes, good, very nice. Okay. <laughs> so what we have here is a speech teacher who's really just trying to get people to hear a sound that they are making and to try to mimic that sound. The problem is that we, as speakers of language, my friends, we know our own vowels forward, backwards, upside down, left side, sideways, backwards, everything. We know our vowels, the vowels we use, okay? And if there is a specific, specific, that's a new word, guys. Specific? I was going to try to say specific physical thing, and it came out specific. I am going to, it's codified, I'm pointing it, my friends. You are here. Mark down the date and time where specific happened. It's going to be on February 23rd at 3.13 p.m. Pacific time, right here on TMFA, <laughs> specific. So the teacher, to <laughs> get back to it, the teacher is saying, there's a sound I want you to copy, but is not giving you any information about how to copy that sound. It's just assuming the student will be able to copy that sound. But they're not being specific physically enough, specific enough for... <laughs> 
uh, for the student to actually know how to copy the sound. On top of which, like I said before, you know your own vowels in your language really, really well and in your own accent really, really well. And so your brain has a specific limited inventory of things that it recognizes in terms of vowel sounds, typically. And so when the speech teacher says, say, ah, and you in your accent have a kind of different version of this sound, and you make that sound instead, your brain may not actually be able to distinguish between those two things may not be able to distinguish the difference, the subtle differences that possibly exist between two different versions, two different physical versions, two different specifical physical versions of this kind of ah sound. And the speech teacher is hearing a difference, but you, the student, aren't. It's as if, um, this is a great analogy that my uh, wonderful friend and colleague, Pamela Vanderway, of dialectcoaches.com uses all the time. So I'm going to steal it from her for a second. But I love this analogy because it's so spot on. So thank you, Pamela, for this one. Um, it's as if your teacher said, say, ah. And the student went, ah. And the student's brain goes, yeah, blue. They're both blue. What's the big deal? Blue. But the teacher says, the teacher's going, no, ah, not ah. And again, the student's brain goes, yeah, blue. They're both blue. Until, my friends, we have something very, very specific physically that we can rely on, our brains have no way to distinguish between those similar sounds. All right? They will struggle for months and months and months trying to figure out what's the difference between ah and ah. All right, now listening to me, you may have even had the experience now of going, I think he's just saying the same sound over and over and over again, and I'm not. <laughs> All right, I'm trying very, very hard to be specifical about two very different vowel formations that I'm using. All right, and I'm going to choose this one vowel, this ah vowel, because it can be a little bit, hmm, a little bit nebulous, a little bit frustrating for people who are coming to accent work, uh, you know, frankly, from whatever language background, English, American English, UK English, any other language on the face of the planet, the vowels I'm going to talk about all kind of share this same nebulous confusion stuff here. Um, okay, I'm going to check in the comments here and see who's here. Robin Collins is here. Robin, I love Robin. Robin always has the best questions, so Robin, challenge. Best questions today. Here we go. Bruce Foyer, Bruce the Bass is here. I am having an amazing and blessed day. Thank you, Bruce, and I hope you are as well. Uh, Bruce, I hope you're working on your vowels. All right, make sure that you're very diligent in your work with your vowels. Bruce is studying with me right now in my general uh, universal accent skills workshop, and uh, we're discussing vowels. So, uh, Bruce, I hope you're getting a lot out of this, uh, this talk in a little more detailed way. And uh, be diligent in your work, my friend. And diligence comes greatness. All right. Harriet Thornton is here, says, hi from the UK. Harriet, what part of the UK are you in? I want to know. Uh, what cool uh, regional accent do you possess? Uh, I want to know that. Steve Crawford is back. Steve, Steve, I'm not ignoring your email. I got your email. I've just been wicked busy over the weekend. So uh, good to see you again, Steve. Uh, Chelsea, I'm going to say Haler. Is that how you're pronouncing? Um, I, again, I'm sorry for butchering your names. Uh, Spelling is no guide for pronunciation, so I'm just guessing. Uh, so Chelsea says, this ah, ah, ah thing that I was going through says, OMG, me trying to learn Korean. Yeah. Vowels that are not maybe your own from your own language or your own accent background, that can all be really confusing, potentially, especially if you don't know exactly what's going on. You're just trying to mimic the best. Um, okay. Cool. We got some accent questions. Here we go. Robin, Robin rose to the challenge. I, I just threw down the gauntlet. Robin goes, I got good questions. No matter what, she's like got a quiver of good questions. She shoots them out. All right, Robin asks, what approach do you take when an actor needs to learn a, quote, fake accent, e.g. a poorly trained spy from very bad to a little bad? That's a really great question, actually. What's the, um, the best way to think about this, I will say this. So if, if uh, you're playing any character at all and you need to have a, quote, bad accent, um, 
when really what we'd be dealing with is not necessarily the relative goodness or badness of an accent. What we'd be dealing with is how good or bad is the character at the language they're trying to speak? How fluent are they? Right? Because there are ways that we can fine tune any accent, all the features of an accent, all right, depending on how good at the target language we want the character to be. So let's say that I am playing a poorly trained spy who needs to, uh, you know, let's say I'm playing a, uh, a Russian who's a poorly trained spy and has to speak English, all right? We, we see characters a little bit like this maybe in Stranger Things with the Russian characters in that show right now, um, dealing with Russian language, and then when they speak English, we're dealing with something a little bit like this. So we can, we can modulate the amount of influence that, for instance, the Russian language is going to still possess on the speaker, right? It, the, the physical, the vocal tract posture of the Russian language is just going to be there so fully that no American English sounds can come. It's all going to be Russian sounds shaping English, the English language. We can do that. We can deal with, in terms of writing, we're going to deal with, uh, you know, word choice, vocabulary, sentence structure, all sorts of things like that. So we don't ever want to think of it like a bad accent or a fake accent. We're interested in grounding it in the reality of the learning the language. And if you're poorly trained, it means that you didn't have an opportunity to really learn the language fully, to learn how to do the thing. And so we want to make it look like you're not so good at English or not so good at German or not so good, whatever those things are, right? That you have a limited vocabulary, uh, a vocabulary, a limited, you know, sense of the sounds or, or how to, you know, the music of the language is a big one, right? The rhythm and pitch patterns. You know, we can, we can mess around with all those. So tons of things that we can do. But just know this. It's all in service of the storytelling. What does the character need? What does the scene call for? What, is the, what does the project call for? How are we helping tell the overall story? That's the biggest one. So, uh, Robin, great question. Thank you for that. Um, all right, Chelsea. Uh, Haler, uh, is that how you pronounce it? Tell, tell me, Chelsea, how, how to actually pronounce your name please, before I butcher it another time, says, how do you pick which accents to learn? Great question. I get asked this all the time. Um, two ways to do this. All right. The first way is what accents do you want to learn? What accents would be fun for you to have? Because there's nothing like learning something that's fun. All right. So we, we pick those that way. But then on a more serious note, we want to use your accent stuff a little bit like we uh, talk about branding. So when you take Wendy's course and, you know, we're looking at types and archetypes and, you know, what are my looks for my headshots? And, you know, this is my lawyer, dad, slash friendly cop headshot. This is my, you know, these other things. When we have all of those types, we also need to pair our accent work to those types. You know, what accents am I most likely to be cast using during my career based on how I look? All right. But not only how you look, uh, I, I was coaching um, a Canadian actress who's Asian. Uh, on an audition that was using a Mississippi accent. And there was some worry from this actor. Was like, I don't know if this is going to fit because I'm Asian and I feel like I don't fit into that Southern culture. And I, I, I'll just say this, skin color and accent have nothing to do with one another. Zero things to do with one another. There's a giant and thriving Asian population in, in the Mississippi Delta, by the way, who all have wonderful uh, uh, Asian heritage and fantastic Mississippi accents. So, uh, yeah, skin color and accents completely unrelated to one another. Um, so in any case, um, lost my train of thought, derailed off the way. So I'm going to go back to questions. So uh, how do you pick accents? You want to look at what you look like, what roles you're going to try to be submitted for. And again, the sky's the limit. Anything you think you could possibly use as an actor, you want to have access to. Because the more accents you have, the more casting on. All right. Uh, da, 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 dum, dum, dum. All right. Teresa is here. Oh, yeah. As I commented on Teresa's monologue earlier, you're very welcome. And just as a reminder, Monologue Monday, guys, if you want to put up an accent monologue, tag me in that monologue. Hashtag accents. Tag Chris Lang. I will be there. I'll take a look at it and give you some notes and some feedback for sure. All right. Um, Steve says my comment just muted you. I hope not. I'm still here. Still here. You just reload the video and catch up, Steve. Um, 
All right, Caitlin is here from California, and Chelsea says it's Holer. All right, Chelsea Holer, got it. Locked and right in there. All right, my friends. Um, so any other questions, pop them in the comments. Again, say hello if you're here. Um, let's talk vowels. There are three vowels that I'm most interested in talking to you because they are a little bit wonky for most people, and they have that say, ah, oh, ah, oh, kind of issue. All right, the three vowels I'm going to talk about live in this area of the chart. So we're dealing with back of the dorsum, all right, and we're going to go with cupping. We're doing back of the dorsum cupping, all right, with open, we're in an open position. All right, so um, just from a kind of cardinal vowel perspective, this location back here, that dot, okay, has two versions of itself. So the, uh, the open back unrounded vowel goes like this. Ah, ah. Ah, now the rounded lip version of this, the open back rounded vowel, same thing inside the mouth. I'm doing the same identical thing, ah, but I'm going to round my lips. Ah. Oh. So I've gone, <coughs> pardon me, from ah, unrounded lips, ah, ah, ah. So two pretty distinctive vowels there. Now, if I go up just a little bit and I go to the open mid back rounded vowel, I get something a little bit like this. Aw. 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 So, from one, two, three, the open back, open, most open back, unrounded, aw, rounded, aw, and then the open mid back rounded, aw. To any of you out there, put in the comments, do these sound similar to you? They sound a little bit the same, maybe. Maybe they share kind of locations in your brain and your understanding. This is not that uncommon, all right? Um, one of the things that we do in accents is we use a, si a series of words to help categorize these sounds for us as they appear in accents uh, of English. So this is only for English, and it's, it's usually related to general American and received pronunciation British. All right, these word categories are were kind of developed for those two accents. We call these lexical sets. So that, for instance, that open back unrounded vowel, ah, all right, appears in a general American accent in the word. Oh, I have flashcards, you guys. What am I doing? I have flashcards. Here we go. <laughs> All right, it appears in the word father. All right, it also appears in a similar word that I don't have written down, but I'm going to write it here anyway. Palm. All right, now you may pronounce this L, palm, and that changes the vowel if you do it. That's why I like the word father. All right, so I may describe that open back unrounded vowel as the palm or father vowel. That's how I'm going to describe it. I might use another word for it a little bit later. Just teasing here. I'm going to use another word for it. All right. The other one, the rounded version of that, all right, the rounded version, so the open back rounded vowel, all, all. All right, that sound appears in received pronunciation accents in a word like lot, lot, oh, lot. Okay, so I would describe that whole category of sound as lot. All right, so if there was a word that contained this ah oh sound, I might call that a lot word. And if there was a sound that contained ah, I might call that a Palm or a father word. All right. Hope this makes sense. Let's continue. So that third vowel, the close mid back rounded vowel, <coughs> existed the general American accent in words like thought, thought, all oh, thought. I thought it was that. All right. So words in English that contain those sounds in whatever accent. I'm going to call those thought words, thought words. Now, 
really quickly. <laughs> I'm going to show you a new flashcard. I'm going to show you this flashcard. I want you to read just the words that you see in black marker. Read them out loud and see if you can detect for yourself what you are doing, which vowels you are using, and physically what's going on here as you read from top to bottom the three words in black marker. Read them out loud to yourself. Read them out loud to yourself. All right. And don't change your accent for this. Just read it in your own accent. We want to discover what your accent's doing. Read it out loud again. Read it out loud again. What do we get? All right. In my accent, all right, I'll read these. See if you can detect a difference in what my vowels are doing as I go through these words. Tall coffee latte. Tall coffee latte. Tall coffee latte. Now the question is, do I have a thought vowel here, a lot vowel here, and a palm father vowel here? What do you hear? Tall coffee latte. I'll have a tall coffee latte. Where's my tall coffee latte? What's going on? Where is it? All right. Um, for those of you following along at home, my own accent, my version of General American, has a thought vowel here. So that uh, mid open, back rounded vowel here, thought, tall. But then I skip this one completely. I don't have a lot of vowel, typically in my accent. And I actually take this lot set of words and I smush it in with my palm words. So I only have two vowels here. Tall coffee latte. Ah, ah, ah. Tall coffee latte. Now, I'm interested here. This is exciting, my friends. Harriet Thornton from the UK. This is yours. <laughs> okay. When you read these three words, Harriet, what comes out of your mouth? Probably something like tall coffee latte. It's likely, depending on your regional accent, that you have all three vowels. You have a thought vowel, a lot vowel, and a palm vowel. You have all three of those. All right. Say it out loud and see if that happens. I was doing an RP accent, tall coffee latte. Where's my tall coffee latte? Where is it? I would like to know. My tall coffee latte. Now you also notice that my thought vowel is a little bit different in the RP, tall versus the Gen M, tall. So the vowels move around a little bit for sure, no matter what. All right, they're definitely, they move from where I showed you on that vowel chart even. They definitely move from there. So this is all by way of saying that these three vowels can change a little bit. And unless you know what you do in your accent, whether it's, you know, American or British, you know, whatever it is, whether you know which vowels you tend to use, you'll never know when you go to another accent. Let's say I'm going from my Gen Ann here. And I just have a tall coffee latte. Tall coffee latte. This is too loud. When I do an RP accent, I better know how to do a lot vowel because I don't have it in my own accent. So I have to add it. And I have to know where it is, what it is, how to do it, when to do it, why to do it. All right. Um, and this is all stuff, by the way, my friends, that you should look to learn with your accent coach. All right, when you come work with me, I will take you through all of the vowels that are possible in English. I will take you through all of the lexical sets, the word sets that we use. 
Um, Bruce, uh, you know, said was studying with me. He has just gone through this section of the skills workshop, and we were working on that in our last office hour together. And so we were going through and finding, like, we, we took a vowel chart. We said, all right, where, where does your accent words live? Where's your, you know, and, and in terms of lexical sets, you'll learn that when you come uh, work with me. they will give you a list of words. We'll have fleece, kick, dress, trap, goose, foot, thought, lot, cloth, tom, nurse, comma, strut. Um, probably forgetting one. <laughs> I'm amazed I remember those all in that order, by the way, just now. But, uh, you know, and then we have, those are just monothongs. We've got diphthongs, price, face, goat, north, force, um, near, square, uh, start. Lots of different lexical sets because we're dealing with lots of different sound categories in English. Um, so I just wanted this to be a little bit of a teaser for you guys as to why it's important that we have a specific, specific physical thing to do in terms of vowels. We have to learn how to do that so that when it comes to tall coffee latte, you have some actual idea of what it is you're doing from accent to accent, let alone from your accent to any other accent. That's the thing that we would like to do. Um, it's difficult for me to go any more deeply with this because I don't actually have any feedback to give you because I can't see or hear you. So, um, you know, it's always a, a downside to this particular medium is that it's just my face. It's just my face talking here. And, uh, you know, we get to ask questions, but I, I don't get to hear you or anything like that, um, which is important in this work. So come work with me, my friends. If you're not already, uh, I want you to go to my website, dialectcoachchrislang.com. You'll see a link there where you can sign up for a free Zoom consultation call. All right, I want you to do that. We'll talk through everything, all of your questions, create a plan of action for you. Um, we'll talk about my skills workshops. We're also going to talk about, you know, private sessions and what those look like. Uh, Caitlin uh, Ketstever was wondering what my rates are for a one hour session. Um, so I, I have um, a sliding scale that I use for working actors. Um, so uh, it's important that, you know, in terms of how my rates are structured and everything like that, I, it's just call me, <laughs> call me, Caitlin. <laughs> Let's have a chat. Um, hop on my website, like I said, uh, dialectcoachchrislang.com. I have a very friendly chatbot who will happily take your information. And once you give your information to my chatbot, he will give you a link, and you'll use that to sign up for a consultation. Uh, but just know that I, I, I operate with a sliding scale, and so uh, you know I'm basically friendly for all budgets, uh, as it turns out. And I have workshop options and all sorts of things like that. Um, so come to my website. Let's talk. I invite you. Please keep up. Talk. Uh, schedule that consultation. All right. Teresa asks for auditory learners or mimicry um, theory uh, over. What am I reading here? <laughs> for auditory learnings, mimicry over theory slash application. Is there a good source for accent practice? Good question. All right, so just know this. Mimicry is a very powerful tool. All right, mimicry will be, if you possess the ability to be a good mimic, great. We love that. All right, it's going to be a very useful tool for you. But mimicry is not sufficient. Mimicry alone is not sufficient. Because we will, we will run into issues where if they say, ah, ah, you're going to run into that no matter what. You have to have a physical underpinning that can verify the mimicry you think you're doing. Because if we just rely on mimicry, then you're, you're spending all of your time trying to remember what that one thing kind of sort of sounded like kind of that one time. And then you're kind of trying to sort of hear that in your own voice and compare the two, even though your memory is not probably that good as, as to what it was. So mimicry can't get us all the way there. Mimicry will fail us when it comes to detail and flexibility and things like that. So I would say the best way to practice, you know, and a good source for accent practice is going to be working with your accent coach. That's the best thing to do, right? Working in terms of my accent skills workshop, working one-on-one -on -one with me, all of those things are available. But you've got to learn how to pair that mimicry skill with the physical side of it at the same time. Um, all right, my friends, that's, um, 
you know, like I said, it was going to be a short one today because I have to go coach. I've got some actors who are waiting for me. Um, and so I need to go and leave a little bit early to do that. But I'll just finish by saying this. If you do have any questions that I haven't gotten to, please put them in the comments. I definitely, definitely uh, will circle back and take a look at them. And um, if you um, are interested at all, go to my website, dialectgotrislang.com. Talk to my chat bot. Schedule your free Zoom consultation. And we will go from there. We'll get you guys set up. Um, if you are interested in getting some feedback on your accent work in the group on Monologue Mondays, post your monologues with accents and tag me with a hashtag accents as well, just so I can find it more easily. But certainly do tag me because I want to make sure that I can see your lovely, lovely work. So um, that's all for today. Next week, my friends, I will have another special guest with me. All right. If all things work out well, I'm going to bring my friend and colleague, accent coach Eliza Martin Simpson. All right. Eliza Simpson is one of the greatest accent coaches on the face of the planet, a dear, dear friend and a wonderful colleague. And we're going to be talking about some accent stuff um, that I think you will be interested in hearing. So she's going to come join me next Tuesday and we're going to talk your ear off. So um, until we meet again, my friends, much love to you all. Um, hope everybody's staying safe and well. And stay hungry, my friends. Stay hungry in this work. All right? The business is coming back. And if you're not training right now, get training because you do not want to be left behind. All right, everybody. Until next Tuesday, I will see you all on Team FA. All right. And, yes, Caitlin, I do these lives every Tuesday, 3 p.m. Pacific time, every Tuesday right here. So set your calendar and your reminders and all of your next Tuesday. All right. Bye, everybody.